swiping or whatnot, moving your finger around and having something occur. And it's kind of specific to uh, to touch devices, like you know, your regular phone can't do that, or your your uh, non-touch screen phone can't do that. So it's kind of nice that it's something that's um, kind of only specific to devices with touch screens. So, so um, yeah, so it's honestly very easy. Android does a lot for you um, to help you out. Well, are you guys global app? Yeah. Are you all set? Looks like you're also. Yeah, we're all set. Thank you. Um, so I guess let me uh, kind of explain what we're going to be doing. So, um, so again, gestures. Um, you know, you're moving your finger around on the screen. You want an event to occur. Uh, Android comes built in with kind of uh, ways to respond to this. So uh, I don't know if you guys have worked at Java before, but um, there's things called methods, pretty much classes uh, that contain methods. So they're kind of like objects. And pretty much um, what we're going to do is we're just going to import kind of the library that Android gives us and then use it to, um, you know, just just work with gestures. So the built-in ones that Android deals with are. Um, uh, like action up, okay, so action down is when you put your finger down on the screen, action up is when you take your finger off, uh, then you actually move. We're, we're gonna go into that, but pretty much Android can tell, you know, do you put two fingers down, do you put one finger down, where you put down the screen, and um, and whatnot. So we're gonna kind of manipulate that to, um, to basically work with gestures. So what we're first gonna do, I'm just gonna create a new project. Um, what we're first going to do is, uh, I'm just fine. So if you guys haven't done this before, I went over this in a couple lectures. This is just um, creating a new project in Eclipse. Um, our lectures are online. If you're not sure what I'm doing, I'm just kind of filling in the names and uh, what I, you know, the specific things that I want. So um, I don't really change anything. I just put in the name that I want. So. We're going to create a new project, and then we're going to um, we're basically basically going to use this class called um, or this library just called Odd Touch Event. So, okay. So here we are. Here's gesture V two. If you see on the left of the screen right here, um, this is our project. So um, we're going to open up the Java file. We don't really care about the um, the XML file. If you guys remember, uh, an XML file shows you know what content's there. Then the Java file um, manipulates that content. So what we're going to do is we're going to just um, work with our Java file. So here we have um, just the default uh, class, our main activity um, Java file that Andrew gives us, and we're going to just do public. All right, I'll go over this in a second. Um, let me just write it out. And if any of you have like like random errors, like feel free to call me over. I'll try to figure that out for you. Oh yeah, Bert. Bert can always help you out. He's the man. Uh, you know, just raise your hand or whatnot if you have a question. But so if you see here, I have this method called onCreate. So if you guys have worked with Java before. It's kind of like uh, your main method. So when Android loads, it's going to look for this method called onCreate. And so that's how it's going to like know what to do when you open up this application, So our, yeah, the mobile application. So then we're also going to have this, um, this method right here called uh, onTouchEvent. And so that's kind of something that um, is just when, when a touch event happens, this, it's, Android's going to look for this method, and um, and it's going to do whatever we tell it to do, and we're going to put that between the two brackets. So again, how does Android know to look for this uh, method? It's because it's a built-in library. It just knows that when the screen is touched, if there's an on-touch event method, it's going to go, all right, we got to um, go through and look at it. So we have this thing, motion event, that's a, uh, a variable type that we're going to input. And so motion event is kind of, you can imagine what it is. It's just, um, it 
contains data about the event, um, about the touch event. So when we click, when we press down on the screen, there's going to be information like where it's located in X and Y. Um, I guess maybe how hard, I don't know if, uh, or how hard does it make sense. Maybe the, dur the duration of the um, event, uh, if there are two fingers, if there are one finger, it's going to have a bunch of information. And we're going to take that information and then um, use it so we can enable kind of swiping between the two. So here you see I, I have this little red squiggly. This just means that um, I haven't imported the library yet. So uh, again, kind of Android doesn't put in all the libraries you want because it doesn't want to load every single thing you might possibly use. That's just slow. So what we have to do is whenever you have an error in um, Android and uh, you know it's dealing with the type or whatnot, you kind of just want to hover over it and make sure that you've imported the library. So we're gonna import that. I should think. Oh, this is blue. Um, okay. So, all right. So now we're gonna actually um, work with our uh, with this event. So we have this method on touch event. It's gonna be called whenever um, the screen is touched. So right now it doesn't do anything. Um, it, there's nothing in it. So what we have to do is we're gonna to have to um, actually take the event, figure out what type of event it is, and then do something with it. So um, we are going to do uh, action. So here we're going to use this. Um, we're going to use this uh, method called get action masks mask, and it's just going to pretty much um, what it's going to do is it's going to take the event, the motion event, and it's going to just figure out what type of action it is. And so the way Android um, kind of categorizes the action, or, or uh, I guess kind of the way it indexes what type of action it is, is that. Um, it makes it an integer. So pretty much it's gonna have this field. So this is this um, thing, this motion event is an object. And so this object has a field that's called um, you know, prop, you know, something like what type of action, what type of event. It's just a field that um, basically talks about whether it's um, you know click down, whether it's somebody lifting a finger up, whether it's somebody moving their finger. And so it categorizes it in an integer. So zero might mean um, finger down, one might mean finger up. So what we're doing right now is we're just um, make, getting that field and putting it in this uh, variable action. So then we're going to call this, we're going to um, use a switch statement with this variable action. So we can um, basically uh, have different events happening for each different type of event. So different, we're going to have different methods pretty much for each event. Uh, maybe that'll make a little more sense when we're uh, actually writing it out. So we're going to do uh, switch. So this is what I was just talking about right now. So we have this switch statement, and it's taking in this um, integer variable action, which just describes the type of action we're doing. And right now we're, um, this case, uh, again, what I was talking about, it indexed the type of action in um, an integer variable. So this thing, motion event dot action up, what this is doing is just um, looking in the class of motion event, and it's making sure that this action is what we call an action up, which is when you lift your finger off the uh, screen. So we're also um, going to create another case, and we'll be filling more stuff in about this later. I'm just creating the cases for now. So this one's called action down. Okay. 
So here we have our two case statements, which we're really gonna primarily work with today. So action up and action down. So action down is when you put your finger down, action up is when you lift it up. Kind of speaks for itself. Um, so I'm, quickly I'm gonna explain something called toasts. I don't know if you guys have heard of that. Yeah, question? Uh, yeah, can you, can you say what that return false means? Well, the return false. Um, this actually should be return true. I was just putting it in so we didn't get an error. But I guess this, this just means, um, I think this just indicates to uh, whatever calls this on touch event method that um, there is a method. So um, return true. I actually don't really know. I haven't really thought about it. It's um, kind of the documentation just says it has to be a Boolean. So what it might be is if um, you might have like a try uh, statement or uh, a throw and catch statement, try and catch, yeah, try and catch statement. So it could be, um, you know, did this event actually happen? You return true, and if it didn't, you return false. So I think maybe that's just, um, if you have other methods that rely on a touch event happening, you can um, see if the event actually happened. Uh, I think it's just to give a little more uh, flexibility to whoever's using, to the developer that's ever uh, using this method. Are there any other questions at all? <clears throat> So I'm gonna explain this thing called toasts. So an Android toast um, are just little pop-up windows. So it's a little it's a little window that'll come up on the screen, um, and then it'll fade out after a couple of seconds. If you guys have Android phones, you probably know what I'm talking about. They're called toasts because they do exactly what toast does, which is just pop up um, like from a toaster. <laughs> so this the way we use toast is that um, what we can do is we're gonna to put two toast events. Uh, one in our action up and one in our action down, so that we can um, kind of tell if it actually happened. So it's kind of an air checking thing. So when we click up, we're going, or when we click down, we're going to, a toast will appear to be like, yep, we're in this method and we know that you clicked down. So it's just to verify that this um, on touch event method is actually working. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do toast. And I'm just gonna call this <laughs> um, real quickly, I'm just going to make a, uh, uh, I'll just do get. So to go into, to kind of briefly go over, um, what uh, toast is, like these inputs that I'm putting in. The first one's just the context. So context is a little abstract to describe, but it's pretty much just um, telling the toast where this toast is gonna occur. So we use, the, we get the application context. That's that um, method right there, a built-in method. Here we're just gonna um, write what we want the toast to say. And then the next thing is just um, how long we want it to be. So toast has these um, two different lengths that it's built in so length short and there's also length long um i think we also put in a number of seconds or whatnot i think it's just it doesn't have to be through the toast class but so here we make a toast and then we're going to do this thing called toast.show so the toast actually appears so i'm going to copy and paste this up to an action event up and i'll change the text so that we know the difference between an action up and action down. Oh, all this toast. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so here we have it, and we're going to, um, I'm gonna run the emulator real quick to see if this works. So are there any questions at all? Um, I don't know if I'm going too fast, too slow, if this is interesting or not. Um, yeah. So the toast is defining what type of variable toast and toast down is? Your, uh, like the toast class or? Yes, so the toast of the capital P. Yeah. Defining what type of variable toast is? Yeah, exactly. So um, toast is, yeah, built-in Java class that um, the library is already imported. So yeah, we're just making 
I should have named it something other than toast. But we're making a variable called toast that is type of toast. In uh, Java, like when you declare a new variable, you have to like declare what type it is and then like the variable name. So like, you know, int action, int is like type, action is like what you actually call it. And you know, you'll see that form a lot in this thing. So yeah, this um excuse me wow. Um so this toast doesn't have anything to do with uh, gestures or whatnot. It's just to make sure that a gesture occurred. So it's just like if you had, um, you know, like you wanted to print out a line, I don't know if you've done Java before, um, but you know, in any programming language, if you just wanted to print to the screen, you know, like, and just error check to make sure that, uh, you know, something ran or whatnot, because with gestures, if we don't, we're, we're not gonna know if this is actually working, you know, if we have nothing to indicate that it is working. So this toast, it'll appear when we click down and then it'll appear when we click up. Does so, this like help us like debug, like make sure something's actually happening, like figure out what's going on in the code, like if there's any errors? Like hundred errors. Okay, so this is the emulator loading up. It takes a little while to do. Um, I'll just keep it down for now. But, so yeah, what we're gonna do next after this, just to show you guys that it works, is that, um, we're gonna get the uh, X and Y values of the initial push down, and then we're gonna um, get the X and Y values of when uh, this is lifted up, so the finger is lifted up. And what we're gonna do is check if the user has gone, has kind of made a swiping motion. So if they've, um, you know, if they click on a screen and then they go this way, we're gonna check um, the Y bounds to make sure it's not like something like this where they're not really swiping, they're kind of just, uh, you know, move it across the, sc the screen. So we want like kind of a linear swipe. Then we're gonna check if it traveled a certain uh, distance in uh, horizontally. And then what we'll do is we'll um, we'll just move over to if we have time, we'll talk about animation. So when you swipe, rather than just like a new uh, page popping up, it'll actually slide over to a new page. Yeah. Why is action? <clears throat> what do you think? What is action and integer? Okay. Um. I wish I had more to kind of explain this. This is sort of how Android stores the information. Like if you look at like the like an act, int action equals event dot uh, like get event whatever, like that get event thing is just um, returning the value of a field inside of the event object, and that just happens to be an integer. This is how Android stores it and how they like. Will like, um, like figure out which what thing is what. Pretty much, it's just like rather than having um, rather so have like a string that says like action up. You have like one, like it's, it's equal to one or something, and that will indicate to the system that it's action up. Yeah, so it just kind of saves space without having to use strings, and it also. Um, you know, a string can be anything, an integer can only be, you know, a number. Uh, so it kind of just brings the scope down a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I guess I can explain. It's hard because this thing's up. Uh, let's see if it's over there finished. Yeah, no. Okay, it's installing. So are there any other questions at all? Running that, you know, the first time was kind of slow. I should have done it beforehand. <coughs> This is, uh, we didn't worry about the XML file today. Um, this is just built in for, uh, into Android. So whenever you create a new project, this is just a default, hello world. Um, so what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna click on the screen. It's actually kind of hard because I guess you guys can't see what I'm doing, clicking wise. But so I'm gonna click on the screen and it's gonna act like a finger is clicking on the screen and we should have a little toast that pops up. So that's that toast I was talking about down there, actually down. So I'm still holding down on the screen and now I'm just gonna lift up and action up occurs. So we have a response to touch events. So quickly, we'll, we'll talk about swiping. So here we go, um, um, so we're gonna wanna create um, these variables, x down, x up, y down, 
and y up. And we're going to create global variables, which means that they're at their, they're in a global scope, so they're just not in this um, method that they persist throughout the entire um, file because we're going to want to get the when we click down, we're going to want to get the um, x and y coordinates in this one, and then this method is going to finish. And then when uh, the person lifts their finger off. This method is going to run again, and so we're going to want to get the x and y values um, of when they lifted their finger off. So if we didn't make them global variables, once this um, method went through the first time, the information we got down here would just disappear because the variables were created in this scope. But so up there, um, they kind of exist throughout the entire program, so uh, we'll always have them. So they won't be lost if uh, this method finishes. So what we're going to do, yeah, we're just going to use very uh, a very simple and intuitive um, method. So what we're going to want to do is x down equals um, so right here we have our variable x down that we made, and we're going to want to use this this method just called get x. So it kind of makes it makes sense. It's we have our event which is the input, so the actual kind of uh, data about our finger when it's put down, and then we're gonna. This event has the x, um, x and y position, so this gets the x position for us, and then it stores it in this variable x down, so we can use it later. So we're gonna do the same with y down equals event get y. So here we have we have those two variables. So now we're gonna do the same thing in action up, except now we're going to use our variables x up and um, x down. And the reason that um, we have this thing that's like int in parentheses is that um, this method returns a number that has decimals in it, um, you know, it can get very specific. But we're, we don't really care about the decimals. You know, we're not we're not looking for anything too specific. We just want to make sure that there's a general swiping movement. So we're just going to make it an integer, just to save a little space, just to make it easier to work with. Um, and then y of equals int event dot get y. So there we have it. We have our x and y for both when we put our finger down and when we put our finger up. So the the hard part kind of is in this action up. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to um, use an if statement to check if um, a swipe actually occurred. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to say if and which should we check for first? Uh, do you want to do y first or x first? It doesn't not matter. Okay. Um, so here we're gonna do, we're gonna wanna make sure that y up is, let's see, y up, we're gonna wanna make sure that it's lower than, okay, actually let me first explain um, kind of how the x and y uh, works, so what it's based on. So if we have a screen here, so picture this as the, or let me get the Android screen up. So up here, this top left corner is zero, zero. So um, in x and y coordinates, it's 0, 0. So out here, this might be 200 x and 0 and y. So the farther you get away from this um, top left corner of the screen, the x and y values are going to get bigger. So you know it kind of would make sense if they put it in the middle, per se, but then we're dealing with um, you know like the origin in the middle of the screen is 0, 0. But then we're dealing with you know negative numbers and whatnot. So we just, um, so Android just put zero, zero up at the top. <laughs> so when we go down, our Y value is gonna get bigger. When we go up, our Y value is gonna get smaller. So we want Y up to be um, less than Y down. And we're gonna give it about 30 pixels of, um, of space. We're also going to want to make sure that the opposite is true. So y up is uh, greater than y down. Obviously. 
So what this does is it just checks that when we're swiping across the screen, we're kind of staying in a linear area. So we're saying we want, when we lift up, we want it to be um, within a range of like 30 pixels on the side of where we originally clicked. So this is just to make sure that if I don't go like this or whatnot, like if, you know, I'm just like moving my hand in, ob in an obvious not swipe motion, then it's not gonna just say, oh, you swipe. It's gonna make sure that it's kind of linear, like, all right, I'm swiping this way. So it, it's kind of within these like Y bounds. Um, so I think I did that right. It's a little confusing because it's kind of reverse because the top left corner is zero, zero. But uh, so let's see, if Y up, so I, yeah, it should be, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So then we're also gonna check to see if our X, so see if we moved um, enough in the horizontal uh, plane. So instead of like, if I just do a quick jerky motion, as weird as that sounds, but if I just go like this, um, you know, that's not a swipe. We wanna make sure that it kind of travels, you know, a decent distance for, for a, a swipe to occur. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that X, <coughs> up is going to be greater than x down plus 100. So we're saying you have to move 100 pixels or 100 coordinate spots in whatever um, Android uh, puts their coordinates, like whatever units they put it in, before a swipe is going to occur. Then we do plus 100 because we start from the left side at zero, and so as we go to the right, um, it's going to get greater. So this is a swipe to the um, to the left. So this is if I, what I've been doing all day, this, so this is a swipe for this way. We can also do a swipe for this way, and we'll do that right after this. So we're gonna have, and again, we're just gonna make a little toast. So take this, copy and paste right here. So we're gonna have a, sh um, and we're gonna say swipe. And I think this should be a swipe so we're going to copy and paste um, we're going to have another if statement and we're just going to copy and paste what we wrote up here and we're just going to switch one logical statement or is this making sense yeah <laughs> so we're going to switch this so before was x up is greater than x down Right now we're gonna do x up is less than x down, and we're gonna do minus 100. So, uh, yeah. So this means that we have to move from here to here more than 100 uh, units to uh, make a swipe occur. And again, we're gonna put a toast in just, to, um, just so we can check that it works. And we're gonna do this, we're gonna call it swipe right. So as you can see, I was kind of talking about toasts or like error checking. So that's what we're doing right now. And I'm actually just going to comment out the other toast we worked with so it doesn't get cluttered on the screen. But um, so again, we're, we're using toast to error check and make sure something occurs when we don't really have a way to um, make sure that it occurs otherwise. So it's loading on the emulator. Any questions so far? swipe left and here if we move this way swipe right so we're in pretty good shape right now um try swiping left Let's see if that does anything okay so yeah so it's talking about before if i swipe like this if i swipe like, like that that's why we had the y um the y coordinates just so that uh you know if you swipe like this or go like that it's not going to register as a swipe so let's see to what point do i need to Okay, so that registered. So yeah, you, you have to be a pretty linear for a swipe to occur. So, and yeah, we haven't put in anything to um, deal with swipe up or down. So we only have swipe um, left and swipe right right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a new activity, which again in Android is kind of like a page. So um, we'll create a new page and then you will, um, animate over to it. So we have about 25 minutes left, so I think that's enough time to do that.
So real quick, I'm just gonna create a new um, activity. If you guys haven't been to previous lectures, this might be like a whirlwind um, and it doesn't really make sense what I'm doing, but we have talked about this in the second lecture. I think we talked about creating new activities um, and creating intents to move from activity to activity. So here we're gonna just make a uh, right activity. So this is the activity that's gonna be on the right. So this is what's gonna happen when we swipe right. So um, yeah, I'm just creating a new activity. Uh, so again, if, if this doesn't make sense what I'm doing, it doesn't even really make sense to me. But, uh, but we have gone over this on lectures, so um, yeah, we have to import a, a lag, right? So we're, we're going to, um, we have a new page, so let's create a new XML file real, real quick so we can um, have a different page that loads up. So I'll go to the layout. I know you said that you're just starting to do Android, right? So this is kind of like, is this going too fast with the uh, creating new pages or whatnot? Okay, just cause, um, just in the name of time. Um, but we have we have gone over it before, so I'm kind of assuming that if if needed, you guys can check out that resource. Um, so I'm creating a new XML file, and uh, we want a relative layout. Whatever we can do later. Um, so I'm just gonna create a little text. So uh, text view object. And we're just going to, uh, if you remember, we need the layout width and layout height um, attributes for any object. And um, so that's what I'm filling in right now. And then we'll also give it a little piece of text. So I'm making this, this uh, this XML file, this layout, really simple. It's just gonna have a text view. I'm not even gonna worry about where it's located on the screen, just in the name of time. Um, but again, you know, you can create very compact, complex layouts and do the same thing that we're doing today. We're doing it on a very simple streamlined scale. Uh, what should the text say, Bert? What are you thinking? J I. All right, we'll just say yeah, right. and we'll throw it right at you. Okay, save. So this is what it's gonna look like, if you can see it, it's a little small. But that's what our new screen's gonna look like. It looks pretty crappy, but again, we're just putting it in uh, to kind of demonstrate. So this is called redactivity.xml. So if we go to redactivity.java, then we're gonna use set content view, and we're gonna set content view to the new XML file we just made. Okay, perfect. So this is all we have to worry about. We're just creating a new activity. We don't have to do anything on this side. Um, so again, this is like uh, another page in the uh, Android application. So now we're gonna do, uh, that's real quick. Now we're gonna create uh, animation files. So this means that um, we're going to create an XML file that describes the animation we want to do. And I'll write it down and then we'll kind of go over it after it's written down. So we're going to want to create a new folder under res called animation, or and, and I don't know how you pronounce that. So this is where we're going to put all our animation files. And we're going to want to create a new file. And we're going to call this uh, Slide right. Okay. So we can use this real quick. So these and oh, for you all oh, so uh these animation files are a little weird and I haven't really worked with them that much for them. So we're going to uh um, get rid of this, I'm going to say uh, translate,
this slide doesn't really mean all that much. Um, it's just saying where we're getting this like translate um, from. I think it's just a documentation thing. So. So I'm gonna write this out and we'll go over what each thing means. So we're gonna do Android. So it's only it's only three lines. <coughs> so uh, duration equals five hundred. So these are the only two are the only three lines. So it's pretty simple um, to create this. So what we're doing is we're just, uh, we're gonna use this thing called translate. So again, translate just means move something around. Um, and we are going to just translate. We're gonna come from X delta. So 100% means we're taking up the whole screen and we're gonna move um, to X delta. So we're moving from 100% to 0%. And that's only in the X direction. So the Y, nothing's gonna happen in the Y direction. If we want to do something in the Y direction, say we wanted it to slide off in the corner, we could also adjust Android from Y delta and Android to Y delta. And we have to have um, the Android uh, colon in front of it, just to say we're going to look in the library called Android, um, and we're going to use this uh, attribute called from X delta and then to X delta. And duration is just how long it's going to take. So 500, let's see, I, that might be in milliseconds. Yeah, that might be a millisecond, so 500 milliseconds, um, but don't quote me on that. So this is our in animation. So now we also need to create an out animation. So here we have our in animation. We're just going to create our out animation. So again, we're just going to create an Android file. Um, And let's just copy and paste for the sake of time. And this is going to be so there's a lot of tutorials online that go over animation. And um, I actually, when I was first doing this uh, about a year ago, I was using these tutorials and I would use their um, X and their, those values like from X delta to X delta and they always acted a little weird for me. So animation is kind of a, uh, it's kind of a finicky, a finicky thing. Uh, what I had to do was kind of trial and error. So when I was doing this, yeah, about a year ago, um, I would put in different values, see what the animation looked like and um, possibly we'll uh, we'll reverse well we'll see if we can try to like break the animation so have it do a weird animation kind of just show how um, easy it is to mess up animation but so these values that I'm plugging in right now are the values that I found work the best um, and I've used them in apps I've made so um, let's hope that they that it works um, but so again, we're coming from X delta, we're gonna move negative 50%. So, um, you know, these are all kind of relative movements. So we're gonna, we're moving one screen this way, we're moving another screen this way, and, um, and we're gonna do it at the same duration, so it's gonna look pretty smooth. So if we go to our main activity, uh, so yeah. We go to our main activity and we go, we're doing swipe right, right? So here we're gonna use, um, so we, we're gonna use means that a usual transition for Android, so when it switches between apps, it's just, or it switches between pages, is it just the other page appears. Um, so what we're saying is we're going to override the transition of just popping the page up and we're going to put in our own animation. So we're going to do R and slide in. <clears throat> okay. So 
So we're, we're saying look in the uh, folder animation, or um, A-N-I-M, and look for this file, slide and write. And so these two files, this is how it's gonna start and this is how it's gonna end. So we need two animations to kind of do, this is what's gonna happen on the, um, the original page, so the page we're on right now, and this will happen on the page that's coming in. So to make this work, we're gonna need to make an intent. So I've gone over intents in previous lectures. I dedicated a whole lecture to it, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna breeze through right now. Um, but an intent just tells Android, hey, we want to go to a new page. Uh, so here we created uh, um, a variable go to write that is type intent, and we're gonna come from this page, so main activity doc class, or actually. Again, we have to import the library, import intent, go to right. So we're creating a new intent. We're moving from this uh, this class, this Java file, to this that file we made over here, right activity, and it's it's a type of doc class. So then what we're going to do is use start activity. So again, I've gone over intents in detail before. Um, so if this doesn't make sense, you can check out our other lecture that goes over this. Um, but again, it's just a way that we can, we're intending to go to a, a uh, different page. So that's what, how you can kind of think of intents. So these three lines right here, we create a new intent. We start that intent, so we're gonna, um, so actually execute the intent we made to go from this page to our next page. And then we're gonna override the transition of those two pages with our animation. So let's see if this works. Oh, actually before I, Move on. This error was hitting me last night, and it always gets me. What I talked about um, in my other lecture about uh, creating a new activities, we had to remember that we always need to update the Android manifest. So quickly, the Android and I, again, I went over this, but um, the Android manifest is kind of just like a document. It just says this is everything that's in this application. So a big error that I always get, and I always forget about it is that I never actually add my new um, pages that I made to the manifest. So it, I say, go to write, write activity, and Android said, well, we didn't load it because you didn't tell us that um, that page needed to be loaded. So uh, we need to basically tell Android that this is gonna be a potential activity. Did I spell that wrong? So our Android name is where it's located. So it's in this um, it's in this project in this package called com.example.gesture v2. Um, we don't we won't go over packages now, but pretty much a package is just a collection of all your files, and it's called write activity. So there we have it. We've added. Uh, oh, I screwed up. I didn't edit this. So there we go. This should work. Okay. So now we're now we're good. We've updated the manifest. We have no errors in our project. And so now let's see if this animation works. So I'm gonna hit run and we're gonna check it out anyway. The one error that I that I might have made is I uh might have switched um the two animations by accident. So you know how we have the two animations? One was called in and one was called out. It might need to be reversed, but we'll check it out. So here, um, let's try to go left. So our swipe left works. So now we'll try to swipe right. Let's see. Did our thing load? Oh, launch cancel. Oopsies. Okay, so this actually didn't go on yet. Um, we will actually use that. So 
we run this for some reason. It did not load on the head. at all. I know I kind of went over a lot in the last 20 minutes about animation at all. No questions? Anyone get any like syntax errors or like don't know what the code's doing at any kind of any point in this? Yeah. Uh, for a uh, slide by name, mm -hmm. I can have uh, an error at the like, HTTP schema that I did. Oh, okay. Uh, Any more questions, any more errors at all? Um, for you that just walked in, we we're just going over gestures today. Um, so we'll have the lecture online and then we'll also have all our notes on it. So um, if you guys, if this lecture kind of went a little fast or maybe I didn't explain things enough, um, we will have like our detailed notes about what to do and we'll put those online so you can play around with them yourselves um, and just use them to, you know, tell them to what you need. Uh, let's see. As you can see, I don't know if you guys have an Android phone, but this is being very slow compared to what Android phones are usually. This is just because it's running a whole in another operating system on your device. What was that new emulator that Tim was talking about? Oh, Jerry. yeah, I actually meant it was uh, something with Jerry on it. I don't know what the name was. G Motion. You have Genuine. to install the virtual box too though, so it's a little bit of a process, but it's worth it. It's a oh, lot I, I think I have virtual box though. Yeah, so then you, there's even a plugin for Eclipse. You play with it a little oh. bit. I just installed it now. It oh, took sweet. me about 10 minutes. Yeah, I'll have to do that because this is just way too slow. It's worth it. So again, the emulator is slow, so the animation is going to look a little clunky just because it's, it's slower than it will be in real life. Well, let's see. <clears throat> no animation at all. Did that animate? Or did I did I miss it with the blink of an eye? Shake this out real quick. practice So we're encountering a little, uh, a little difficulty. So <clears throat> is this what we have? Um, so uh, so this looks right. So let me actually update the animation files and just use these ones that I know work. So. Um, 
Oh, you just uh, minimize one of the things. Oh, oh there we go. Whoa. Everything's going wrong now. Um, so I think that's what we had. And now we're going to do slide right. We're going to do uh, So I must have just messed up the syntax for this. Sorry if you guys are following along and writing down the, the syntax. And it, it should be very similar. What may have happened is I may have, oh. Yeah, I think I, might, I, think I messed up um, this, this URL when I wrote it. So what happened is <coughs> the file didn't load correctly, so it didn't do an animation. So um, let's now run it. So main activity. Uh, so we have our. So now we have our main activity file. Let's see, it uses the animation here. Slide them right, slide them out. All right, let's run this. So yeah, I think what happened was I messed up the URL on. Um, pretty much, I just messed up syntax, and um, and Eclipse didn't let me know because it didn't see wrong syntax. It was just wrong because it was a URL. So this is installing. So I know it's, I think it's right around you. Yeah, so it's 1157. So, okay, there we go. Do we see that? Now I make sure, all right, I'll run it again. So um, I actually stupidly didn't make a way to go back. So I have to run this every time I want to show you guys again. But so, um, so that's a little, little bit, and it looked a little clunky. We'll run it again, um, but that was a good transition. It animated from the uh, activity that's imagined to be on the right side, slid in. So it kind of adds a little more um, functionality to your app, makes it look a little cooler than just pages loading up. So again, we'll do it right here. So I'm swiping right, and, and it slides over. So it's, a, again, a little clunky, but the emulator is very slow. So on your, um, I've run this on my Android tablet, or the um, applications I've made with this exact same animation files, the exact same duration and uh, percentages up here. So all the same stuff. And it looks pretty good when it's on a real live um, device. So that's, that's pretty much it. Um, we covered everything, again, I kind of went fast, you know, it's hard to put in this, um, you know, this stuff in an hour, it's, you know, easier to sit down and go over what everything means. So it's not, you're just not typing in code and be like, I don't know what this means, but it's working. So we're, we uh, usually put our notes online and we'll have this video online in case you want to watch it again. And um, we'll also create a lab. So what we're thinking of doing is kind of changing up the way we do lectures rather than just lecturing and then having no content after. We're gonna to try to create a lab, so um, so pretty much this is just a document, kind of a tutorial to walk you through how to do everything. Um, and so it's almost like like a piece of homework, you know, like a lab that you have for class. You don't obviously have to do it, but hopefully it'll be a little more in-depth tutorial to explain everything that I may have gone over too quickly or probably didn't explain as well as you guys would have liked. So that's pretty much it. Are there any final questions at all? Anything at all about any part of the, even, First five minutes, we, we can go over any any stuff that we went over there. We also have um, open office hours Monday six to eight, and MCS one forty eight. If you guys want to come in, like you know, if you have any issues with like whatever about post up, and or you want help with your the projects you're doing for your groups, we're there. Yeah, Bert, Bert's there. He knows his stuff, so. And like after this, we have the design lecture. I think it's in the same. That'll be in room two twelve. We have a design lecture, twelve to one. Some okay. Basic teaching and stuff. Photoshop. Yep. And if you could, on your way out, just come in and sign in over here. Um, just want to know who came because we're interested yeah. in that kind of stuff. All, all five people. All five of you. We appreciate you coming. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you. I'll be here for like five or ten minutes afterwards if you want to go over anything. Um, and uh, we'll let you know where we end up putting all the final documents. So yeah, thank you for coming.